guy who arrested Jack Bauer. His name is Pernell Harris. He was on 24 for quite some time. Pernell, tell him about yourself. Well, I'm a native of the Bay Area, born and raised. Um, was discovered on Venice Beach while on vacation. The lady who uh, approached me was working with the Brad at the time, and she was working with a gentleman by the name of Frank Gadsden, who was putting a group together. And also, um, he was the choreographer for In Vogue at the time. So that's how I uh, got brought to Hollywood. Did you guys just bump into each other on a, uh, on a store or something, or were you like, was on Muscle like, Beach like showing off or something like that? I was actually, <laughs> I was actually just yeah, relaxing. No, I was <laughs> just relaxing, taking in the you know the weather, yeah, you know you know the women, yeah, and um, she approached me, and, and um, the rest is history, so to speak. When was your first Twenty Four show? What was it like? Remember you were telling me about the reading you guys did? And, well, what, uh, yeah, what happened was um, season one, the season finale, I was the arresting officer of Nina Myers. And um, when season two came about, they were still putting some pieces to the puzzle together. Nina, uh, the character, decided that we should tie me in because I was the last person in contact with her before she went to prison. And um, at the, the table reading, Kiefer... I um, was a little skeptical because of my background and whatnot, and he tested me. And it was upon me to be assertive and to find places, the strategic places for me to inter interject. So once we, sp we started speaking, I started to give my suggestions, and Nina backed me up 100%. Nice. Yeah. What was the experience like? I mean, it, what I'm saying is, is that were you just sort of pinching yourself and saying, oh, yeah, this is something else. It's like, I can't believe it or am I not? screw this up or what were you thinking? I was thinking that, you know, this was an opportunity that I had been building up towards um, throughout my career in film, um, in theater, and also in music. I always wanted to be uh, part of television history and um, I've been successful as a model, um, motion picture actor, and I've also been featured on a um, living single, Everybody Loves Raymond. I wanted to be part of something that was special, and I got my opportunity. Yeah, what, what uh, kind of doubts did uh, Jack Bauer have about you? Um, just because I hadn't had a lot of formal training, you know, he wanted to just fill me out. Yeah. You know, he's very, uh, he's an executive producer of the show. So he's uh, very technically involved in it. And he wants everyone to have a certain uh, sense of urgency with the show. So just being an executive producer, being a director, uh, Nina vouched for me. She wanted me to come in. He hadn't really worked with me. So, you know, just initial uh, meet and greet type of thing, see what type of chops I had. But as executive producer, he gets money out of the deal, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, he's, yeah, so he's, his pocketbook is at stake. His product has to be correct. Yeah, definitely. Uh, what's he like in person? I mean, what's he, I mean, at one point you said to me in passing, he was kind of intense, but. Very intense, very intense. Um, on the set, he's Jack Bauer, you know, even when they yell cut, he's in character. Um, I had the opportunity to drive him around in one of the vehicles. So in that scene, I was a little bit nervous because I, I had to hit marks with regards to the vehicle. Um, and I didn't want to mess up. So that made me be in the moment. I was no longer myself. I was Agent Harris. I was you know, with Agent Phillips. I was protecting Nina Myers. And I felt that. I mean, being part of um, working with an actor like that, you want to step up your game. You know, so that you can deliver what they're, you know, a little bit more what they're given or uh, uh, come up to their level. So let's well, you tell me at some point you go from memorizing what you're supposed to do to feeling it. Am I, am I wrong? That's no, you're not wrong. You're correct. You're correct. I mean, the camera doesn't lie, you know, and you can't be up there faking it, nervous to be that person. You really have to be the character that you're portraying. You said once to me that uh, he was so in character, you know, he being Kiefer Sullivan plays Jack Bauer, that he once went off on somebody. 
Well, yeah, I mean, if I it, just use the right word. <laughs> well, some things weren't going as well, and he was like, "Yeah, you mother, get your asses in here!" You know, it's like, and it, you know, kind of caught people off guard. It caught me off guard, but you know, speaking to other cast members, saying that's Jack doing being Jack. You know, that's not Kiefer Sutherland right now. That's him, and we have an hour. He didn't shoot anybody. He didn't shoot anybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God he didn't shoot Nobody anybody. Got Nobody got the eyeball plucked out of nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we were all in a hiding moment. Something didn't go right. You have so much daylight to shoot the scene. They want to shoot that episode in that day. You don't want to, you know, prolong it and shoot another day of, of whatever you're working on. So, time is of the essence, so that made it a little bit testy. When you arrested him, did you have to learn any technique to, like, handcuff him or anything? Or did you... Well, that was... I, I arrested Nina Myers. Yeah. I didn't get a chance to arrest Jack, but what I did, I, I got a chance to pull a gun on him and yeah. make him stand down. Yeah. You know, so, you know, in hindsight, after it was developed, you know, that's a pretty big deal yeah, to absolutely. make Jack stop in his tracks and uh, take a second. So, I'm very, um, very proud of that moment. <laughs> so, what happened since then? So, you, I think you were killed, or you were killed. You're on the island. So, you're on the island, we don't know if you're alive or dead, right? Right, right. Yeah, okay. So, how the man, how's the mango juice on the island? Tell us. Well, it was pretty sweet, you know, there's lots of women and everything. I'm in a grass skirt, you know, doing my little hula dance. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, hopefully I get a chance to come back. If not, I'm looking forward to what the, the future brings. What does the future hold for you? What do uh, you see from Cornell Harris? Well, I have an album right now that I'm working on entitled Say Noism. I'm working on a project uh, through my company called Virtual Jam. I'm trying to make a new mecca of basketball. And I'm interested in talking to some investors right now to see if we can get this thing off the ground. Um, also, I'm, I'm really active in going around the community in the Bay Area right now, speaking to children on, with regards to health and fitness and also career, making sure that they understand what career is all about. Yeah. So that's the album name. Where did that come from? Well, Sainoism is um, something that I came up with. It's, uh, it's a relationship disease. <laughs> <laughs> that um, you know, it's it's a, it's a new thing for the summer. You know, a guy, you know, who's single and you know trying to explore a relationship finds himself um, in certain relationship pitfalls. And you know, some people are self-destructive to where they will get themselves in situations to mess up a relationship. And you know, because of uh, what happened with Halle Berry and, and yeah. Eric Benet, you know, there was really no medical term for what happened all we heard is that he had a, a sexual problem so to me <laughs> that was uh that was that was food for thought and well, how do you uh, explain bobby brown and uh, whitney houston in that context that's is, it could be the same you know sanoism could be equated to that as well when you you um out of literally out of your mind and subconscious mind your your, your inhibitions go down and your natural your natural uh, self comes out and then you just you know throw caution to the wind you know we are human beings we make mistakes so say no wisdom is born yeah. what about the music I mean where are you in the, in, in the it's finished right it is oh it's done okay. yes, yes. Yeah, the okay. album's done congratulations it's a uh, pop funk it's in the pop funk genre I like that term pop <laughs> funk right pop funk so tell me what like what's your favorite movie Favorite movie all time is Rocky. Oh, okay. Rocky okay, One. It's kind of like your life. Right. Yeah. Rocky yeah. One. Rocky One. Yes, it's it's totally me. Favorite car. Uh, favorite car Porsche. Model. Um, nine four. Cayenne or nine eleven. It was nine four four. Was my favorite. Uh, city. City would be. Point Richmond. No, take that back. Sausalito. Okay. So I'm still in the Bay Area. Right. Uh, favorite actor other than yourself? Um, Denzel. Favorite actress? Um, Obviously, you can't be other than yourself. <laughs> <laughs> uh, favorite actress at this point would probably be Charlize Theron. Ooh, that's a hot one. Definitely. Hot one. Absolutely. Uh, tell us what you're doing now. Um, what I'm doing now is basically building myself up for success. You know, my projects are keeping me pretty busy. I'm uh, assistant general manager at a, at a Ghost Gym Oakland. Uh, once again, helping the community learn more about health and fitness, keeping myself in shape as well.
So people want autographs, where do they go to come and see you? They can come to Gold's Gym Oakland at any time. 600 Grand Avenue? 600, 600 Grand Avenue. Oakland, California. <laughs> Oakland, California. That's What's why. the phone number? 510-451-4653. Remember that by heart. And I'm also putting up a MySpace, and I'm also going to be on Zenny's blog. So. That's right. It's going to be on SBS. That's right. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. All right.